Joining us now is Shaniqua McClendon, Vice President of Political Strategy for Crooked Media and Head of Vote Save America, and Ashley Pratt Oates, political commentator and former Republican. Welcome back, ladies. Good to have you here. So, Ashley, Governor Walls has been out this week specifically trying to win over male voters. In our new NBC News poll, it finds a huge gender gap between Harris and Trump, with men backing Trump by 16 points. Can Walls help narrow that? I think he can, but I think more importantly, Harris needs to do more to continue to shore up the female vote and make sure that women turn out on Election Day in the same way that Trump is trying to shore up the male vote. So I think, yes, it makes sense for Walls to continue this strategy. But at the end of the day, Harris really does have to shore up that female vote. And I think the poll that shows that you know, people will vote based upon the issue of abortion, which I've said on this show before, will be a sleeper issue for turnout on Election Day. And this election is all going to come down to turnout. And that's evidenced by all of these new polls that show that this race is in a dead heat. She has certainly made it more competitive. But this gender gap will be, I think, a driving issue that we'll see on Election Day. And abortion could be that number one driving issue um, that really does get women out to the polls to make sure that their vo voices are heard in favor of the Harris Walls ticket. And that would be supported by the NBC News poll findings uh, today, finding that it is the most motivating factor at this point. I believe it came in at 22 percent, but it was the top one, the issue of abortion. So, um, Shaniqua, Kamala Harris kicking off the week with a series of stops focused on engaging black men in particular. That includes this radio town hall with Charlemagne the God. What do you think of this strategy? What do you think she needs to say here? And is it going to work? Yeah, um, I think it's really important that she is having this conversation with him. Um, you know, there's always a lot of talk about the slight gains that Republicans have made among black voters, particularly black men. But one thing I can say is Republicans are showing up where they are. Uh, this year alone, Nikki Haley, Candace Owens, and Congressman Byron Donalds have been on um, Charlemagne's show, The Breakfast Club. Um, and Democrats can't just cede that space. That show and Charlemagne himself reach a lot of the voters that they are trying to get to turn out and shore up their support with. So it's going to be it's important that she's there. Um, I think about what she has to say. I think she just needs to answer a lot of the questions that people have. They're still trying to get to know her and ultimately want to know what she's going to do on the economy. I think she's been taking a lot of these interviews. And she gets to talk about her personal stories and how they relate to the things that she wants to see and the policies that she wants to implement. So I think continuing to hone in on those and take some of those tough questions that I'm sure Charlemagne will, will give to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he will. Um, so, Ashley, back to our new NBC News poll. It shows the five-point lead that Harris enjoyed over Trump after their debate. That was about a month ago. That's gone. Her favorability is also falling. Is this a function of people still just getting to know her? And is this media blitz strategy going to work? I think this race was always going to be close. And what Harris's late entry and really unprecedented um, kind of moment of entering into the race the way she did has shored up that this is going to be a competitive race. So I think job well done by her campaign on that front. But the honeymoon that she was receiving, you know, really showed that people were trying to get to know her. And now at this point, some of the disadvantages that she has are that people still don't know her, whereas a disadvantage for Trump is that people do know him. So I think this is where she really needs to continue to get out there on the campaign trail and shore up the base of support that she has among young people, among women, mm. among minority voters, and make sure that they turn out to vote. Because at this point, turnout will be what drives the results on Election Day. And from what I'm hearing, the Republicans have really outsourced their get-out-the-vote efforts, which I don't think is necessarily going to help them on Election Day. If anything, it's going to make things mm. more chaotic. Democrats traditionally have been a lot stronger at get out the vote efforts, which I think they've really honed in on in these final weeks in the last stretch of the campaign. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shaniqua, while rallying here in California, Donald Trump mocked a woman being escorted out of that rally. Take a listen to this. This election is your chance to send a message. Back home to mommy. She goes back home to mommy. Was that you, darling? And then she gets the hell knocked out of her. Her mother's a big fan of ours. You know that, right? Her father, her mother. Now you always have that. Um, yeah. Uh, what is he even saying? 
Uh, that was my first question. If I was sitting in the audience, my first question would be, what is he talking about? Um, I think we can generally gather that someone must have been heckling him and was removed from the audience for it. But then he starts talking about her parents and her getting hit. And it's just really, really confusing. I think it's just another opportunity, though, for voters to see that he's not all there. You know, he spent so much of the election making uh, Joe Biden's cognitive ability a big issue, so big that Joe Biden actually dropped out of the presidential race. And now, you know, his mental acuity is on um, on display for all of us to see. And it's not that sharp. Can I ask you, Shaniqua, how can the Harris campaign yeah. convince voters to quote you that he's not all there? Yeah, I think we've started to see a little bit of that reporting. But, you know, the ads they put out when they just if we just if they just show the things that he says, you know, they don't even have to really edit it down that much. He's just saying things that literally do not make sense. You know, I know this happened some time ago, but I always go back to that question he was answering about child care and he started talking about tariffs. And so it's like he has these little bits of information and he's trying to piece it all together, but it doesn't make sense because, you know, as much as I do not want this man to be president for his ideology, everything's not clicking. You know, you can see the deterioration that has happened since 2016. And so I think, one, um, putting that out there for people to see, but also Trump is going to do it on his own. He's going to be doing all these rallies and whatever interviews he has left between now and Election Day. And people will continue to see just, you know, how unbalanced he is. Yeah. The one I go back to is boats and sharks and electric engines. Remember that one? I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you both. Good to see you both. And I will see you again soon.